Hello. How's it going? Good, man. I miss your ass. Oh, come on. I know. On. It's been too long. It's been too long. Sorry. My, my Wi-Fi is uh, a little janky right now. Yeah, way too long, brother. Bugging when was the last out. time I yep. saw you? It wasn't at Ultra. It was, there was a more... Where was last time? Was, it was, I think uh, there was another time more recently, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like in the last... It was in the last couple months I saw you. I can't remember. Yeah. It's all blurry. It's been a little bit of a whirlwind. And now, of course, you know, that, that all seems like, like another... Uh, Dimension. Another, another era. At this yeah, point, you know? no shit, man. Back it's so when we crazy. Could go outside when we could like hang out on boats and go to festivals, yeah. play festivals. Yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's such a bitch because uh, you know I used to always say, man, I wish I had more time to spend at home and just hang out in my house. And here it comes walking up right behind me. Wah -wah! Oh god! <laughs> <laughs> right, be careful what you wish for. No shit. Are you uh, are you in LA right now? No, sir. I am at my home in the, the great state of Arizona. Oh, wow. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Are you, I still, are you I still, I here? still, uh, I live back and forth, though. I go back and forth between uh, LA and Arizona. Sure. Sure. Are you hanging with the family, getting at least some quality time there? Or? Well, that's the thing. It's at that point where, like, you know, if, uh, if it, you know, not to bring up the thing, sure. but, you know, no. if I'm, if that's I'm, why we're here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if I'm asymptomatic, then, yeah. you know, I'm I'm not taking any chances, none. So of course. I'll see my parents when I see them or whenever the right time is right. That's I'm not taking any chances on it. Um, but at, at the end of the day, they're healthy. I'm healthy. I, and uh, I couldn't I couldn't ask for anything more. Yeah, same. You know, I, I'm I'm uh, here in Brooklyn. Obviously, New York's a bit hectic right now. Yeah, but, I can't uh, imagine, brother. I can't I can't even imagine. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, I think uh, I was kind of explaining before. I was like, I've been, just been trying to like embrace the constraints a little bit and just yeah. sort of be productive, be positive, try and stay creative. I've been trying Absolutely. to build, like, you know, build some healthy habits. I've been like meditating daily. I've been like, my guy. How, how about yourself, man? How are you holding up? I'm doing really good, actually. Um, I uh, oh, for everyone who's uh tuned in right now, and for you as well, one of my best tips that I can give, um, for staying at home all the fucking time is uh, <laughs> you got, you have to practice the art of feng shui, my guy. Feng shui, like, all right, here. So my like, yeah, show us. You, give you us a can't, little, you can't a change, demo. huh? Show us the feng shui. <laughs> oh, I got you, bro. I got you. So this this room, this is this is my bedroom. Yeah. But before it was just like, meh, it was like, meh, whatever. There's stuff in here, and then we just like, we're like, all right, we need to make it look real nice. And we just like organized it a little wow. bit more. And then I'm like, wait, I can't stop there. And so I, uh, I I have my reptile room right here, and I just started decorating this reptile room. Wow. And uh, now I got. Uh, I just went. I just went in in here. There's I Albert over there. That's a lot yeah, of different shades of green. As you any good reptile room should have. I love it. <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, doing the uh, feng shui because you can't. If you can't leave your house, you might as yes. well change the room. Even if you move your bed to a different side of the room, yeah. it's gonna make your brain just like expand a little bit. And, oh, I never walk here. But now True. I can sleep here. You know, <laughs> uh, the, one of my favorite things to do is uh, to wake up with my phone in a completely different room. I don't want to wake up next to my that. phone because um, when I wake up next to my phone, no matter how hard I try to tell myself, oh, I'm not going to open it. You know, I'm going to yeah. get up and start exercising. No, you're going to grab the phone. Oh, mm -hmm. I'll just check one message. Boom. All of a sudden you're on Instagram. Boom. All of a sudden you got the worst statistics in the world just start that's what yeah, you're having yeah. for breakfast no and then, and <laughs> statistics then you're like, you're, for breakfast <laughs> exactly and then you're like you're starting your day on like your back foot already you know like, exactly. you're getting, like everything's coming at you you don't get like all of your intention gets kind of like left behind right yeah, yeah. oh absolutely uh it, it was uh it was definitely messing with my my uh just whole ebb and flow of everything like if you want to Keep, if you want to, I know there's people saying things like, um, you know, you if if uh, if you don't do anything during this time, it's okay. And I get that sentiment. I get it.
But, you know, if you truly care about your mental and physical health, you should be doing something beyond just consuming news and waiting for it to stop. Waiting yeah. for it. To, that's not, you have to do something. You're still a human at the end of the day. Yeah. Go and, you know, the whole thing is stay inside, stay inside. And it's like, well, you should definitely go in your backyard or at least open a window and get some vitamin D because. Like I said, we're still humans. Yeah, yeah. And like, I think you're, you're also tapping into something that I think is really important, which is like learning to live your life in an intentional way versus reactionary. And this, like these days we have so many inputs, so many things competing for our attention that it's very easy to just get reactionary by default. Yeah, like, you'll, get, you'll get exhausted. Like it'll be the end of the day and you'll be exhausted. And you feel like you've done a lot, but what you really did was you reacted to a lot versus like all the things that like, <laughs> you know. It's, it's, That's it's, a great it's, point. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I th um, yeah, I've, I've been uh, I've been starting my days at like, uh, probably 8am on average. I like, <laughs> oh, and dude, bro, I've gotten so good at cooking. It's insane. Really? It's, it's, oh, out of this, I'm gonna be a you got it, you got badass husband one I've, day, bro. I've gotten no better at cooking. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've probably gotten worse to be honest because really <laughs> oh dude all it takes is one youtube video because yeah. i always thought when you cook steak you just take the cold steak put it on the hot service and and cover it with a bunch of tasty stuff that yeah. is incorrect that is totally wrong you have to prep <laughs> your rub you need a very nice compound rub you go yeah. ahead you know take some salt some pepper and you night and you wipe that on there and go ahead and add some garlic salt once you got that go ahead and serve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do a, a cooking recipe right now, but I mean, you're you're right. You're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it, I'm it, learning it, things right here. <laughs> straight up, bro. Straight up. I I in the last uh, four days, I've I've learned how to make a fucking bona fide badass uh, Popeyes chicken sandwich. Wow. Um, a, uh, a delicious, delicious five star restaurant burger. And a fucking ribeye steak, baby. I'm going in. I'm gonna be a daddy <laughs> one day. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna need some recipes, cause like, I, I need to be. That's, that's another thing I've been learning is like, I just need a guide for everything. Like the meditation. Yeah. Like without, if, I, if I just try and meditate on my own, I'll be like, has it been 20, 10 minutes, 20 minutes? You know, like, uh. like, I just get super restless. So if I'm like, all right, like, you know, the voice from the phone is gonna tell me when it's time to stop. Yeah, it's like let go, you know. But yeah, cooking like I need to be guided. Do you use the uh, the Calm app? Have you heard I use that Headspace one? actually. Headspace is um, good but too. I, yeah. I hear good things about Calm too. Yeah, all, it, I totally. I'm right there with you. You know, I uh, it, meditating is so hard. It takes oh, yeah. it takes uh, especially if it's your first time trying it. It takes about 20 minutes of all right. Focus, focus. I'm not gonna think about anything else. I'm just gonna focus. And then all of a sudden, you're like. Why are buses yellow? Uh, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why oh, am I yeah. worried about it? And then like, that trails off into a completely different thought. And you're like, wait, I thought I was meditating. And it just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a constant struggle, you know? But it's yeah, like, facts. like one thing I found, and I think for those who are listening to, it's like, it's honestly, like, I, that's like the thing I've been saying the most is that the me meditation has been like the, probably the biggest thing helping me through all this, just because even if I'm feeling like anxiety or nervous or something, if I take 10 minutes, 15 minutes to meditate, I'll always feel at least somewhat better, you know? Oh, dude, it, yeah, isn't that crazy? But like, <laughs> a little bit, you know? Sometimes a lot, sometimes just a little, but it, it never does nothing, you know? It, no, it never doesn't help. That is yeah. so, truer words couldn't have been said right there, brother. I, I totally agree with you. Every single time, even if you don't ha have that, like, uh, Alan Watts level breaking point yeah. where, you know, it just, you completely Zen out, which I've had a few, I've, I've properly meditated probably a handful, maybe like eight times where you really just feel your brain just kind of like leaving totally. your body and just like, oh, just going in. But at the end of the day, it's, it's mostly you just saying, shut up brain, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You gotta like, you gotta keep it in line. <laughs> yeah. But it's okay, because everyone thinks that a lot of, I wouldn't say everyone, but a lot of people, when they try to meditate, as soon as they have a negative thought, or as soon as they get off track, they like berate themselves like, oh, why can't I do it? And it's like, that's the whole opposite. You just take that thought and you say, treat the thought like someone signing up to move into the apartment that is your brain and be like, well, uh, I looked over your application and unfortunately we're not gonna be able to take I you at this that. time. 
make yeah. your way out the door and just let it go. You don't yeah. have to get angry at it. And, ah. That's <laughs> it right. Help. But like, you're right. It's like, rather than try and ignore it, just like get, like come to grips with it, understand what it's about, do the credit check, you know, facts. all that. Facts. And be like, yeah, no, this, this doesn't work for me. Yeah, right? no, big facts, massive facts. I respect that, I like that. I love that you're on the meditation vibe too, brother. No, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's critical. It's it really critical. is. It really is. And it's one of those things too, for anyone who's like listening out there, like so many people told me to do it for so long. And I was like, yeah, totally. Sounds yeah. great. And like, I used to do it more back in the day and then I kind of fell out of practice. And then I was like, oh yeah, like it's on my to-do list. But you know, it's, it's, it seems sometimes daunting to carve out that kind of time in the day when you, especially when you're like, you, you're go, you're like, it's, it's a rush, you're always in a rush, it's go, go, go. But like, mm -hmm. I, I can't, it, if, if that, it's, it's probably been one of the most valuable changes I've made to my life in the past, you know, Damn. year or so. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more, man. It's, it's, it's critical. And hey, what better time to learn how to use it? What better time? Exactly, exactly. So yeah, and for, for, um, for those who are also just tuning in, studio break, we got Gasly here. Um, you know, I put a little question thing in my story. If anyone who's tuned in wants to ask some questions too, we can do a little Q&A at the end. So if you go there, you can submit questions. Um, oh, yeah. But yo, and you've like, you're, I mean, you're staying busy, man. You have a new release out today. I help sure do. Each uh, tell, tell us a little bit about it. Tell us, you know, the backstory, how it come together. Happily. Um, so uh, I got put in touch with Cara and I got her vocals. And I was like, oh God, these are amazing. So the song itself is about, um, uh, it, at, at its core, it's about how uh, we live in these, when, when we're looking for love or, you know, any type of genuine intimacy, we tend to uh, gravitate towards those who are either available uh, or the most toxic for us, but you know, we're as humans, we we crave affection, so we kind of put ourselves in this circle, and that's why it says, "Why do I always do this to myself?" Mm. And uh, and and I really related with that because at that time, I was I I had a lot of vapid, meaning relation meaningless relationships where you know it's just the old in out, as you could say. Um, <laughs> in and out burger, but <laughs> I was not enjoying the beef. Uh, and, <laughs> I feel that. But, you know, the uh, I, I'm really happy with this song because uh, it's 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 a step in a in a direction that I, I'm happy to take, which is, you know, uh, ultimately embodying Ghastly into a genuine, like real human persona, because I, I you know, I'm not always 10 out of 10 energy one two three fuck it no nobody is like that and while their brand and persona may make it seem that way i want to be yeah. very uh what's the word transparent in yeah. uh how i uh let myself be perceived these days um so this song was definitely a step in that direction and a lot of people were expecting an album at this point a lot of people right. were expecting that i was going to drop a brand new album um and uh, give I was in a uh, I was in a uh, an accident in Bali that mm -hmm. was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. I I saw, I, uh, saw this on your I saw this on your Instagram, right? I yeah. So I was, yeah. I, I I'll just give you a quick yeah, yeah. rundown of the story. But um, so yeah. we we're out in Bali. It's our first time out there, and we thought that this would you know we're like oh that like. Of course, we love the vibes out here. It's an amazing place. I love it. But um, we decided, like, yeah, we're going to be, like, we're going to acclimate with the locals. We're going to go ahead and get some scooters and just, like, charge right into the environment. No, 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 no. If you, anyone who's watching, if you ever go to Bali or uh, anywhere in Indonesia or anywhere that's, you know, a lot of scooters like India or Korea or anywhere like that, just, just take an Uber or hire a driver. It's a very, very chaotic area to drive in. And um, so I'm riding up on my scooter and uh, we pull up to this intersection and everyone drives on the left side of the road over there. So already I'm riding a scooter in a foreign country on the wrong side of the road. And I'm like, uh, uh, my brain is just having these farts. And then I see my team on the right side of the road because we have to turn right. And I'm like, wait, don't you have to get into the middle lane oh, God. to turn right out here? But uh, so 
at that moment, at the intersection, my brain just went, and then it just like, and then I fucking pulled the throttle and I rammed out into the intersection. And then uh, this huge, huge fucking semi, not semi truck, like a, like a, a refrigerator truck. Yeah, passes right in front of me. I'm like, I'm still alive, still alive. And then right after that, a, a scooter, thank God it was a scooter. A scooter comes up on my left and just T-bones the shit out of me at about yeah. probably like 60 kilometers an hour and just wow. fucking threw us off the road. Our le My leg was caught inside of the, the gears of the scooter and it was like, my leg was stuck on the exhaust, so it started like melting my flesh off of my leg right there. Oh God! And the, and I'm stuck on the ground with it. I'm like, okay, I'm still alive. I'm still feeling pain. That's good. <laughs> and then I end up, I get up, and uh, I I I'm like, you know, I'm high on adrenaline at that point. Sure, and sure. Like, yeah, you're, you're like, in oh, shock. Yeah. And um, this uh this this guy that I had just crashed into. He gets up and he's like, ah, oh, damn it. Look at my bike, man. And I'm like, look, bro, I'm so sorry. I'm a stupid American. I totally pulled out into the intersection right there. That is completely my bad. And he's like, he goes like this. And this was the moment where I um, really felt a change in myself because he, he, looked at, he looked at me, he looked at my bike, and he looked at his bike. And he looks up and he's like, well, I guess we have two options right now. This can either be the worst day of our lives or it can be the best day of our lives. Mm. And I was like, this is awful. What are you talking about? He's like, ah, that's your choice. That's your choice. And it made me realize that, well, he's got a good point. Yeah. I get to stay alive. I get to continue living in this fucking weird simulation that we're in right now. Yeah. So this is all extended simulation hours is what I'm experiencing right now. So. It made me really thankful. It really yeah, made yeah. me like reevaluate what I valued, you know. And oh, yeah. um, it and now I find myself at this point where I just wanna, I just wanna give as much to the world as I can creatively, and um, as honestly as possible. Yeah, yeah. No, it's crazy I mean, what almost dying can do for you. <laughs> no, it's true though. It's true though. Like you know, I think that like when you have that that kind of brush with your own mortality, you realize like it's it's very easy to feel invincible. When you're young, yeah. like, and you've, you know, when you've experienced some success and like, you know, it, you know, when you live a life that's like, you know, you get to make music and you get to tour and you get to travel and you get to interact with fans. It's like, sometimes you can feel like you're riding high on a wave and it's sometimes easy mm -hmm. to forget that we, you can fall off. There's still yeah. gravity. You Absolutely. Know? And, and, and that any, your day, you know, your life could change uh, overnight. Totally, man. Yeah, it really does. And it's like, it just... You, you, I just took a look at what I was about. I was valuing numbers on the internet sure. and numbers in pieces of green paper with dead people on them more than the fact that I even get to be here, you know? Yeah. Like, and that's where I, I had that really, really big shift in my mind and my mentality. And I think it was uh, a critical, critical moment in my life. And I'm just happy that I get to be sitting here having this conversation with you right now. And you too, regardless, man. regardless of the circumstances, you know, I yeah. mean, yeah, don't get me wrong. It's fucking weird out there. It's crazy. Totally. I don't know what's going on. I don't think many people do, but at least we get to question it. At least we, we know that like, all right, there's two options from this point, right? Right. We're either gonna, you know, figure this out everything's gonna be fine everything's gonna be totally kosher and we're gonna go back to normal and just this will be a big meme and we'll all just laugh about it one day or <laughs> we go full mad max pure chaos and that's gonna be awesome too <laughs> i would be i'm stoked are you kidding me getting our like our group of rebels together our nomadic tribe and just going from like town to town yeah this is this is new chicago now you know <laughs> it'd be awesome yeah, so like either I, i'll have people i see in my life and i'll be like oh like we should catch up let's catch up sometime and it doesn't happen and now it's like well we're all in the same situation it's like can we press a button because that's all it takes now you know facts big yeah. facts big facts oh man i totally feel you on that yeah i've yeah. i've facetimed with so many of my friends that i probably wouldn't have talked to or seen where I'm just like, I need to make sure this person is, you know, alive and well, like, especially with yeah. like family members too. It's like, Hey, you know, like all of a sudden clout ain't worth shit 
Mm. And all that matters is that people are healthy. And I think that's really cool. I think totally. putting life on standby is uh, going to do great things for us in the long run. Totally. How has this all, you know, I know you were, you were talking about how, um, you know, after that near-death experience and, you know, and you, you really wanted to share all of yourself with the world. You, you mentioned the album. How has this all affected like, your creative process? Well, it's interesting. Interestingly enough, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say, oh, you know, man, I just buckle down and just, <laughs> just create, man. Like, if you can't create and just, like, do it, then you're not a creative. <laughs> no. Like, if, it, as, as, a, as creative individuals, and I'm sure any creative individual out there can agree with this, when the world is in pain, you can kind of feel it in, in your heart a little bit. And, and, mm -hmm. um, and that, while that can absolutely uh, derail your creative process, my best, uh, uh, my best resolution to that is to just simply try and channel that in, into it. Even if you're just sitting there and yeah, you're bummed and yeah, you don't feel creative. Even if it's just like while you're watching a show to get your mind off of it and just whether you draw, write, make music, uh, you know, paint your toenails, makeup, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Um, as long as you're, you know, at least trying you're going to feel more fulfilled that you made an attempt and then that will lead to a better day the next day and the next day and the next day. And so ultimately I've just, it's just really important that you find a solid, solid group of individuals to communicate with, whether mm -hmm. cause you know, I'm, my heart goes out massively to those who are locked down and completely yeah. alone, you know, yeah. like that's, that's I, and, and they by far are, are the toughest <laughs> to hold out through that. Um, yeah. And so it, it's, I just think it's critical now more than ever that the, that we utilize this tool like we are right now, yeah. the internet to really, really stay in touch with humans because nobody's alone in this. Nobody's alone in this. And, it, and it's real easy to feel alone in this when you're literally alone. Um, yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, everyone's here for each other. And I think that's, that's the, that's the silver lining in all this. I agree, man. Like that was kind of the concept, you know, like kind of behind the idea of the whole studio break thing to begin with. Yeah. I was like, so many of like my friends who were DJs and producers, they were on the road nonstop, constant cycle of touring, you know, like DJ, like electronic music is different than rock and like hip hop where like it's a different touring cycle. It's constant. In oh, yeah. music. Like, and you go from like constantly touring to suddenly it's like going from a hundred to zero in terms of speed yeah. real quick. And everyone's like, you know, kind of, I know everyone, a lot of people are working in like their home studios and the like, and that's great, can be kind yeah. of a blessing and a curse, you know, because the other thing that's kind of different with dance and electronic music too, is that the actual process of creation, oftentimes is pretty solitary, you know, like, Facts. you know, Facts. like I was in a band in high school and like, it was like a hang every time, like jamming at practice, you know, like you're hanging with your friends, but like making music, you know, is it can be kind of an isolating thing, even when you're Absolutely. not in like a global pandemic, you know? Totally, brother. So that's why um, I was like, Yo, we should do this thing and like, you know, just check in with artists, like see how everyone's doing, bring the community in a little bit, because I, I'm sure that it's the same for all of the fans, you know, like, you know, all of the, all the festivals are canceled, are being canceled one after another. And it's like, how do you, how do we stay connected? So, yeah, um, I, I, I totally feel that, man. I love that you're doing this. It's a great idea. And, um, oh, what, while it's on my mind, one yeah. more tip uh watch comedies watch stand up mm. watch things that are gonna make you laugh you know like i i myself am a big time horror fanatic yeah and uh I, I i'll usually go to sleep with like you know the poltergeist or uh hereditary on tv you know like oh, oh wholesome yeah. content to fall asleep to i love that oh stuff. god screaming you know <laughs> and that's that was usually my my modus operandi when i would go to sleep but now i try to just like push all that out it's like do you yeah. hear the new do you hear the new c19 news it's like nope and i don't need to because i know i will still be here tomorrow so i'm gonna stay right here i'm gonna laugh i'm gonna fucking just focus on just enjoying my life regardless of the yeah. outcomes because you should you uh, there was a there's this um this uh monk that i've been listening to lately mm -hmm. where uh he he talks about how you should reserve the privilege of either sadness, anger, happiness, or laughter for only yourself. Like you mm. should never, and, and it's obviously easier said than done, 
but he goes on and on about how you ultimately emotions are these uh, they're essentially noises that you choose to either listen to heavily or say you know what i understand that's where that emotion is i'm gonna let myself be in control of when i feel that you know like it, you the outside outside effects of the world come in through your brain and then you have to filter them in which which way are you going to put them are you going to take this and put it into your anxiety are you going to take this and put it into your happiness or are you just going to deflect it which obviously like i said easier said than done sure but you know so is uh anything else that's ever been accomplished by humans ever you know that one meme that one thing you know wish i had more time for art and it's like sneaking up behind yeah yeah yeah. (laughs) like literally sneaking in your case (laughs) yeah (laughs) um what you were were talking about how you know we can use this this kind of you know technology to connect people uh i saw that you've been doing some some live sets on twitch like dj sets yes sir what's that been like um how's i fucking love it man yeah Oh, it's so fun. Sorry, I'm putting you in the refrigerator for a second. That's cool. Um, Getting kind of hot in here anyway. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, shit. You almost made me drop my hummus, motherfucker. (laughs) I have been known to misplace hummus. when. when You have been known to misplace hummus. So I'll keep my eye on you. Uh, what were we talking about? Uh, I have the Twitch, the DJing on Twitch, and how that's oh man, been going. I love, I yeah. absolutely love it, man. It's it's honestly it. I always wanted to do it, but you know, when you uh, when you're when you're constantly traveling, you constantly yeah. have a deadline, you constantly have to do this and that, and this and that. It's like, well, I mean, I can just throw another sandwich on top of this sandwich and see if I can eat it. But now that I have time to focus on it. I, I've really, really enjoyed the the genuine connection. It's, yeah. it's, and I swear to God, I there was uh, my last stream. I went for three and a half hours. I DJ, mm-hmm. and uh, by the end of it, man, it felt just like getting off stage. It felt like getting off stage. That feeling of like walking off and knowing that you had a, this shared experience with all these people. It felt just as real then. So. If, it's such a it's such a gift such a gift that that we yeah. have this technology at this time because i can't imagine you know what it'd be like to just sit at home watch the news not be able mm. to connect with anyone really unless yeah. it's like a phone call on the on the landline or something yeah do you um when you're Job doing, when you're doing like the live stream dj sets do you feel like you have a little more like stylistic freedom like you can just play whatever you want or? oh yeah yeah <laughs> Totally. <laughs> I, I, uh, I, what I think I closed last time with, um, uh, Lincoln Park and Smash Mouth mashup. Wow. Uh, it, and by <laughs> the way, it's, it's perfect. And then, and then I followed that up with, uh, <laughs> with the, uh, Chumbawamba, uh, I get knocked down, but wow. just the acapella. And then I let the acapella go for a little bit and found a song that was at the same tempo. I get knocked <clears throat> you know like just kind of it's like oh shit this is working and people are like did you make this edit i'm like it's happening right now yeah the live edit right now yeah that's cool and you know um i know you're, you're playing the um the proximity and brownies and lemonade uh, mm-hmm. the digital mirage is that you're playing is that later tonight that you're playing uh yeah i, I i'm on it uh i believe 9 45 cool uh, i i I have to double check because I I have uh, I have so much scheduled today. I just for sure constantly constantly putting stuff out there, especially with on release days. It's you release know. day. It's release day, and yeah. you release and the release is on proximity too, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There you go. It just and that wasn't even planned. That was I was just like, yeah, let's release that with proximity, and then all this happened. They're like, hey, we're throwing a festival. I'm like, weird. Let's do that. <laughs> Good timing. Yeah, definitely. Good timing. Do you have like? Do you know what you're gonna play for that, or like what your what kind of approach you're gonna do to that set, or no? Nope. Just gonna yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> no, I feel like uh, I, I I want all of these sets to be very 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 live. You know, I yeah, of yeah. course I could I could plan an entire set, but that's usually what you do when you're on tour and you go from state to state. You can't really get away with that on a live stream because you know people the same people will tune in and then they'll be like i've heard this set it's right. the same set you know <laughs> right 
And there's nothing wrong with that by any means. I'm just saying for my personal uh, preference, I like to just uh, be in the moment with it. You know how it goes. For sure. For sure. That's cool. Um, any new reptiles in your life? What, what, how are we doing on that front? I mean, if you want, we can go and say hi to them real quick. Let's go say hi to them. I think. All right. Why? Why have a reptile room if, if you? If, <laughs> if I can't share it with right. people once in a while, That's because right. they're my babies, my babies. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is this is the entrance, and I always, you know, little boa constrictor I caution sign. Because uh, Charles, I've been feeding Charles right here. I've been feeding him uh, chicken lately. Okay. Charles. Wow, what kind of what kind of is that a, is a boa constrictor? Yeah, he's a red tailed boa constrictor, and he uh, I've been feeding him chicken lately, um, and uh, and don't worry, folks, it's all humanely humanely uh, killed and humanely sent over. In case anyone's curious about it, that's just what happens when you own uh, predators, literal predators. Um, but he's uh, he's been eating chicken lately, and he's got this like. He's getting crazier because of it, because he's never had chicken before. So he's like, what the what fuck was, is this? What was it's so before? good. So like, if I, if I even tap on the cage, sometimes he'll be like, chicken, chicken. <laughs> but um, he can't and over here, an existence without it now. What's that? He can't imagine an existence without exactly. chicken. Exactly. Well, I mean, could you imagine not having chicken? Nah. But here's, <laughs> here's uh, my, my son, Albert. 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 Here, buddy. Can you see him? Yeah, there he is. What is Albert? Albert is oh, a, uh, he's a chameleon. He's a panther chameleon. Oh, amazing. And, uh, all the, and all those little white spots he's shedding right now. You can mm. see, like, the tip of his nose is really, really smooth and velvet looking, while his arm right there has, like, a layer of flesh coming off. But he's a, he's, he's a great boy. Oh, he's holding my finger. He's holding <laughs> on tight. Good oh. boy. Good boy. All right, I'm going to try it. All right, let go. Let go. There you go, bud. <laughs> and I got one more for you. Oof, All right. Sorry, this room is super humid. <sighs> right, probably so. just good for them, though, right? That's oh, the, they love it. They, they absolutely love it. love it. They live for it. They couldn't live without it, actually. But right. when I come in here, it's just like, whew. Um, <laughs> and this is, this is Velma. She's just hiding right there. You see her? Velma. Yes, Velma Barfield. She's mm. named after one of the uh, most notorious female serial killers. Oh, and, yeah. And she is just a sweetheart. Yes, you are, Velma. You're too good. She, uh, when, I, when I bought her, they told me, uh, this is, be careful. Uh, she has one of the gnarliest bites you can get from a boa. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I've been bit in the face before. I'll be all right. But mm. she has never bit. She has never struck at me. She is a total sweetheart. Uh, I'd, I'd go as far as to say she's nicer than I'd, probably 80% of people's dogs and cats that I've met. She's super sweet. Granted, she has a little bit less personality because she just kind of sits there and waits to eat. But she doesn't bite me, so it's cool with me. <laughs> when did you get Velma? I got Velma about four months ago, I think. Four months ago. Yeah. I actually have this like big thing of, of, uh, of her breed right there, that big... Oh. Uh, Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Yes, sir. I've never, I've never owned like a bigger snake. I, I had a garter snake growing up. Just, garter snakes are so sick. They're so oh, yeah. cute. They're he was, so like, cute. He was super feisty, you know, like he would sneak out. He would just I would like hear a rustle or like, you know, I get like a sixth sense and I'd see him like airborne. He just like he just figured out a way to like launch himself out of the What? Out of the I don't see. Yeah. I've never owned a garter snake. I only know about them. That's they're, they're really super cute. feisty. <laughs> you got to keep an eye on them. Cuz I saw a couple of people asking where the oh, yeah. other snakes were. Oh, yeah. Um they are in here. These are all of the uh the, the baby ball pythons are in here. They're in this rock and over there in that rock. They're tucked away. But I keep them right here, out here, because one, they look awesome out here, and two, whenever people would come over, it's the perfect starter snake, you know, like, yeah, oh, oh, a snake. And it's like, da, 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 just, I know you got these preconceived notions about snakes that they're all evil and they're all out to get you and they're all venomous, right. but that's absolutely the farthest thing from the truth. Let me prove it to you. Here is a snake named Chelsea, and I'll just put it in their hands, and they're like, "Is it gonna hurt me?" I'm like. Not unless you start punching it. 
Right. <laughs> it's just going to sit there and just be cute and just go like la, 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 all day. <laughs> it's important, you know, to, to get people started with like, you know, the, the proper graduation and the snake. Yeah. You, know, you yeah. can't start um, them with the, you can't go full anaconda on them at the beginning. Absolutely. No, I, I remember one time uh, Skrillex came over to my house when I was in LA and, uh, and I introduced him to Chelsea, the, the Python, because he, he was kind of like mm, about snakes. And I was like, oh, just trust me, brother. This this one is super sweet. And I handed it to him. And he's like, this is really cool. Like, oh, yeah. And I was like, see? <laughs> There's sweethearts. There's Ease sweethearts. them into it. Ease them into it. Yeah. <laughs> What's one thing you're doing every day during this quarantine that is helping stay positive? A routine. Mm. A, ru a routine has helped a lot. Because without, without the routine, I feel like... Uh, you're you're gonna slowly descend your mind can descend into chaos without a routine especially at this time whether it's wake up like my routine right now is i wake up no phone in my room go straight into the bathroom and take a start with a hot shower end with a cold shower brush my teeth and get mm. fully dressed like i was gonna go out into public you know no reason to you know just like of course wearing a robe all the time is nice but for me personally i like to feel like I'm still taking on the day. And that for me, that includes getting, you know, putting thought into my wardrobe, even if only one person sees it. Um, but, oh, yeah. uh, and then I, and then I come out, I have breakfast and then I, I go straight to either uh, watching something that puts me in a good mood, some kind of comedy, or I'll uh, go straight to my piano and just start playing on that. I either laugh or I play piano. And yep. once I got myself in a really good headspace that's when I decide to go to more extracurricular activities and start doing, uh, you know, my really, really kicking in on the music, really, or if I don't feel like doing music that day, I'll draw or I'll read a book or a manga. But the one thing I won't do is just sit there and consume news media. That is, <laughs> you, you have, yeah. I know it's important to stay informed. Obviously that goes without saying, sure. but it's also, of of fact the ignorance is bliss in these times and you need more bliss than you need uh you know to know every single tiny detail and every single statistic so that's what's really helped and and good sleep good sleep yeah. I, i've never yeah. had time for good sleep before same this is same. this is a first man it's really good <laughs> mm -hmm. it's like no, i, I want to like totally be in my point. body right now it's tight <laughs> <laughs> oh no so a lot of people are, my, my family told me they'll never come to my house again if I get this one. <laughs> but I really, really, really want to get a, uh, an Insularis Pit Viper, which Ooh. is, it, it's, a, if you've ever seen, they're so beautiful. You probably yeah, have a picture yeah. of one. They're like really, you see them, those really bright blue ones with like the crazy like dragon face. Yeah. Um, yeah. Only problem is they are venomous. They're venomous, and, yeah. And, Every, all pit vipers are, right? Yeah, 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 exactly. And um, if if you have a low chance of dying from it, but if if you if if you do get bit, you're guaranteed one thing, and that's called a necrosis. So wherever you get bit, that part of your finger is essentially gonna uh, or hand or wherever it's gonna rot and just yeah. turn into a little uh, is, just right? like hole. Which you know. I think it'd be kind of hard if it's done in the right way, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely on some level badass, for sure. Dude, I, and I, I would be, I, dude, I've been keeping snakes for so long now. I would know how to do it. But, you know, I like my family more than I like Insularis Pit Vipers. So. <laughs> sure. How's your workflow for a track usually? Like, what do you start with, you know, production-wise? I get that changes every single yeah. time. Honestly, for me personally, like if I sometimes if I I'll start with just drums, just to like I'll always I'll always have drums laid out just as a uh, as a primer, because no matter what, the song is going to have percussion. I don't know right. exactly what kind of sense or anything, but I know it will have a kick drum and I know it will have a snare and I know it will have hi-hats. So it's very important to have that drawn out and just imagine it as like a drummer in your band and you're the one who's like playing the synths, like going off of the drummer's vibe. And that's how I'll just kind of like get a melody going. Mm -hmm. But I, I think uh, one of the most important things you can do is find a song 
or a collection of songs that really, really inspire you and make your brain light up with that yeah. creative fire. And because a lot of people will just go, I don't want to listen to anyone else's music. I just want to work on my stuff. And that way it'll be totally original. Granted, yes, it will be totally original, but you're going to miss out on the most impart important part of writing and creating music, which yeah. is being inspired. If, okay. when, when, you, when you have that inspiration, you have that fire, you got to lock in and just go with it. So mm. that's, just, that's, my, uh, that's how I would uh, sum that up. What instruments do you play? Um, I play uh, piano, guitar, uh, bass, uh, but you know, like, I feel like if you uh, understand the fundamentals of bass and guitar, you can kind of go in between both of them. Totally. But um, I've been working on piano a lot more lately, like, just, there's, there's the time for it now, that was always my excuse before. So those are, and obviously, you know, I know how to play the Ableton which I yeah, would yeah. consider an instrument yep. by far. It's absolutely an instrument. It may not be, you know, the most uh, typical formula for an instrument, but I sure. mean, you put, you input ideas and ideas come out. I think that's an instrument. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I, I mean, I think Ableton's like a creative playground, you know? Absolutely. Um, it was like a big game changer for me when they, when they went, when they implemented the audio to MIDI. Because yeah. like I've I've always been a high key musician. Like I'll hear I'll hear things, but I, I couldn't tell you what the notes are. I know they're in the right key with each other. Oh but yeah, it yeah. Used to be tough because I used to always have to like find the thing on the keyboard that sounded like the note in my head. But now I can just sing it directly in. And, like, oh, that's a, that's an awesome method. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Um, I started out with uh, what's it called? Audacity. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was losing. I was losing Audacity baby yeah. with G verb. Oh <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I used to use Audacity to like edit audio clips, you know, yeah. and then I'd like bring them into like whichever GAW I was using. Love that. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I, I, I think that it's really important that you just get, if, you, if that's your, if that's the field that you want to go into, just mm -hmm. get the free stuff. If you can't afford the big stuff or you can't figure out how to get a hold of it, then just start with something. If you got GarageBand or Audacity or whatever, you know, start with something. If you really care totally. about learning about it it's not going to harm you to no. learn in one and then bring it over to the other. In fact, it'll probably give you an advantage. It will. It will. I think, you know, you, you bring in these sort of like, there's some universal truths, you know, that you'll, you, you can translate cross platform. Wow. Absolutely. There are a lot of good questions here. Um, what anime are you currently watching? If any, <laughs> well, I, I actually took a pause on my animes to uh, read the berserk manga, um, which I'm on chapter three. 300 and uh there's 80 more to go before i'm just fully caught up but the last anime that i watched was um i believe i rewatched demon slayer and that one is just so beautifully drawn in so many drawings so many frames it's insane that's what a lot of people won't take into account when they watch anime is like look there's no real computer and not a lot of computer involvement here. This is mm. a drawing again and again and again, and they're so detailed. Instead of these just like circle with some eyes cartoons, you know, that yeah. we have a lot of in America where, you know, the computer can animate it for the artist at, at a certain point. For anime, it's still just, that's why it has that t t t t feel. There's like mm -hmm. orange, one, another panel, another panel, another panel. And I just really appreciate the, uh, the time that that takes. So yeah, totally. that's my argument for anime. And if you don't totally. like it, I guess you have the right to your own wrong opinion. <laughs> <laughs> what set or show really inspired you to create dance music? music? Oh, the first one. Very first one. Because uh, I had never, the, my, uh, I went to a, a rave called Bloodfest out here in Arizona. And it's literally, it's just chaos. It's so gnarly. Yes. They got, uh, they have this, they have this giant tarp on the roof. And they like raised this grim reaper up and he just sliced the whole thing open and blood just poured all over everyone. And my mind was just blown. And they were playing hard style the whole time. Just boom, boom, really boom, just fucking going hard. One person asked what your favorite Pokemon was, which I think is probably pretty obvious. Uh, yeah, Mewtwo. <laughs> 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 no, for real. Mewtwo by far. Nice. I can't call myself Mewtwo though. No. Uh, Mewtwo's the only one that ever philosophized. Yeah. <laughs> in the Pokemon movie, he'd sit there and he would contemplate like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
So I respected that about Mewtwo. Everyone else is just shouting their names, a bunch of arrogant assholes. And, you know, he's like, what is the meaning? <laughs> what artists are doing to, to, you know, to drive revenue at a time that there's no live events? Um, I guess it's, uh, it's streams do a part, um, merch sales do a part, uh, you know, Twitch, I guess you can count in there. Uh, but ultimately the, the, it's definitely a, a big in that, but you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily worried about it because at the end of the day, I'm still, uh, I'm still invested in my family's cheese company. Mm. And, uh, and if, if it ever came to that point, yeah, I would just like start making goat cheese. Like I was, like I was doing originally do some tattoos yeah. on the side, but you know, I don't think it's going to come to that point. <laughs> what was, what was, tell me more about the cheese, uh, business. Like what was like your favorite cheese to make? Oh man, by far, I think, uh, uh, Chev was the easiest one. It's a very nice French style cream cheese. We make from the finest Nubian goat milk. Um, and, uh, it, it was always the easiest one to make. And it was also the most fun because of the whole process. I'm not going to sit here and talk you through the whole, um, sure. process of, of making cheese, but it's, it's long and it's, and it, uh, I would say the, uh, either the chef or the feta because making feta, it just raises eyebrows. So if we do have a post-apocalyptic outcome uh, and we start resorting to cannibalism, I'm going to be okay because, of course, if I was like, you can't eat me, I'm a DJ. They'll be like, well, fuck that. We don't need you. But if I'm like, whoa, 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 wait, I can make cheese. Ah, che you want cheese on your person burger? I'm your guy. <laughs> cheese is going to come at a premium in the post-apocalypse. Post oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to be few and far between. Know how to make cheese, baby. <laughs> We're going for the juggler on this one. Best experience you've ever had. Dude, man, like <laughs> trying to prioritize your good with the bad. You can't have one without either. Existence as a whole is the best experience I've ever had, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not going to be that guy. Um, but uh, I, I think um, that's really hard. That's a difficult question. That is the jugular. You're damn yeah. right it is. I saw it and I was like, I have no idea how I would answer this. So I'm going to defer it to you. Probably, probably when, uh, <laughs> probably when I got my, my first armpit hairs, I was just like, ah, uh, yeah, baby. <laughs> it's an exciting time for, uh, <laughs> fuck yeah, <laughs> puberty. Let's, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. To be honest, I have no way of, there's too many facets. There's too many facets to try and like angle that question into. Sure. I could never answer it. I would be for talking sure. to you for like, I would be answering that question for an hour if I was to answer it honestly. For so sure. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know. Let's, that do, let's do one more just because I couldn't more. answer All that right. one. To let's do one more. Let's do one more just because of that. Slightly less jugular question. Please. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What is the best song ever? Best way for an upcoming producer to market music, stand out from the crowd. Well, uh, you, let me tell you, buddy, you're in luck. Now is the time. If you want to, everyone's at home. Now is the time to really do something unique. You have to do something unique to catch people's attention, which is hard because everything's essentially been done for a long time. Everything has been done. But now we just take uh, conglomerations of things that, inspire us and then we make our own stuff so you got to think of something that like it, there's you can, of course the music is number one priority it's number one priority you need those songs that when people hear the first couple notes they say oh yes because you've had those moments where you're in a car with friends someone puts the song on not even a second in everyone goes oh yeah you need that song that really really fires people up mm -hmm. those collections of songs that do this but you can't fight the fact that branding is super important in our social media generation. It is, it's, sure. it's critical. You have to take into account, you know, stylization, uh, what you're influenced by, um, what, you know, you want to convey the, uh, the artistic portrayal of yourself into your brand. You know, it's pe people look at it as a very, uh, 
arrogant thing, but I completely disagree. It, music itself is expression. Your branding should be expression of the music. You can't have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich without peanut butter and jelly. And that's, mm. that's, the, that's the sound and that's the branding you got. Because look at it this way. If you were about to eat a box of, uh, let's say, uh, Fruity Pebbles, and then you pour out Cocoa Puffs, you're going to be kind of like, well, I'm never buying this again. I was expecting this, and I got this. Or let's say you, were, you got a box of Cocoa Puffs, and it was full of uh, tarantulas. You yeah. would probably never buy Cocoa Puffs. <laughs> that would be an alarming, you know, alarming. You got to make sure your Cocoa Puffs are in your Cocoa Puff box. You know, right. you got to branding in and the delivery. It's all a big part of the process, you know? It's expectations. Absolutely. It's about kind it, of- It's making, the same reason a chef, you know, values a garnish being next to a steak. That garnish doesn't do anything, but it makes it look nice and it makes you excited to eat it. And it helps, and it, it's all part of the uh, the digestive process for the human yeah. mind. Yeah. I, I definitely agree on the fact that like now is a great time, you know, to yeah. be creative. Everyone's, you know, everyone's, everyone's plugged in, you know. <laughs> if you, know, else <laughs> if you drop something that goes viral, it's not just going to hit a few corners of the internet. It's going to hit everybody at this point. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, look at Tiger King. Everyone has watched that together. We've yeah. all seen it. I, I feel like I feel like everyone has seen it now. <laughs> yeah, it's a great time for like collective culture. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. We're all there's some some really dank memes coming out right now. That's for sure. <laughs> that is definitely true. That is definitely true. All right. Well, I will let you get going. Uh, hey Matt, it's so it's, good to see it's, you. It's, yeah, it's really great to see you, man. I'm great glad to, to see you staying healthy and sticking, yes. taking care of yourself. Full respect. I really had a good time talking with you today, brother. I'm Likewise, man. Life. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for joining me. And let's chat again soon. Sounds good, brother. Take yeah. care of yourself. Good luck with everything. Stay healthy, everyone.